So hi guys, uh, what we're going to be doing today is going over how to use the plugin Visible in Ableton Live to uh, incorporate projections while you're uh, doing your music live performance. Uh, we went over this in class, so I'm just going to recap um, some of the most basic things. Let's get started. Uh, so I, you can see I have Ableton Live open here. Uh, if I go to github.com ZLTV, uh, you should land on this page uh, by Bob Jarvis. And uh, one of his uh, works here is Visible 2. If you click on that, uh, what you will get is this page. And what you'll need to do is go ahead and download the zip, and that will download to your computer. I've already done this uh, on my computer here, and you can see it is, uh, I put it on the desktop, so I'm just going to double click it to unzip it, and I now have uh, this folder visible to under, uh, dash master. Uh, the way you incorporate this in Ableton uh, is you go to Ableton here, and you go ahead and add the folder uh, right here uh, on your panel here, and you find the folder itself, uh, it's right here, and then you select open. At this point, if you click on the folder, um, the actual visible folder, you'll see a couple things. You'll see effects, inputs, mix, racks, utilities, and then finally you'll see a viewer. Now the way that this works according to um, the author here is the viewer needs to be on a MIDI track and then some of the stuff like the inputs and the players, uh, clip players, need to be on an audio track. So let's go ahead and put the viewer on the MIDI track. We can just drag it here or we could drag it down here. Either way, when you do that, you'll notice that this preview or this viewer window pops open. Uh, the size is based off of this dropdown. So if we change it to 720 by 480, you'll see it gets bigger. And if you were to move this to a second projection screen off to the side there, uh, what will happen is when you hit the full screen view, it'll go full screen. I just went full screen with black here. Uh, and it'll fill up the projector view and you'll still be able to see what you're doing here. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to put it back at a very small uh, number so that it's out of the way, but we can see it working. So the next thing we're going to need to do is bring in some video. So I'm going to go to this audio track here, um, and I'm going to drag in, before we start, um, I've got some media on the desktop here, some visuals. These are all 720p uh, videos, and I double-clicked them in QuickTime and opened them up and exported them as 720p so they wouldn't be too huge. So the way I can bring in uh, this media is I just drag it in and uh, drag it in just like you would a piece of audio and put it in the audio track. You'll get this warning that says only the audio can be viewed and we don't have any audio so nothing will happen. Now in order for us to use this area here, uh, which has now been renamed Media 1 because of the name of my media that I dragged in, uh, I will need to uh, open up the uh, input tab and I will select the clip player here and drag it here or again at the bottom it'll show up here. If I hit that clip player you should see this playing. Now you will not see this playing in the viewer because we now have to link this this track uh, with this MIDI viewer here. So uh, I will go ahead and go to the MIDI uh, section by clicking on it and what I will do instead of selecting auto I will change it to uh, input what is on the clip player and you can see it's called 003 clip player audio if I select that and then I go back here and hit the play button uh, you'll see that actually they are now linked so if I click back here to the media track you'll see that this had the number 003 that's the identity of this piece and then if you click here you'll see that that's picking up from that so it's kind of like a cable that's routing over here I hope that makes sense all right, let's add a little bit more media. So I'm just gonna go back to my desktop and select media two and three. We're gonna drag those in just like that. Close, uh, go back to this, hit okay, we don't care. Uh, now, if you click on a different piece of media, you'll notice that this viewer, by the way, this viewer is not set to scale, so just so you know. Um, so you'll notice that this viewer uh, then plays back the clip that I'm clicking. This now, those of you who know Ableton already know that you can uh, introduce each of these using a key uh, keystroke, uh, like a one, two, or three. So by just clicking the key button here, for instance, if I click on this main area, everything that's on this tab here will play. So if I hit the number one on my uh, computer, you'll see the number one show up here, two, and then three. And that means anything on these two tracks, there's nothing in this one yet, but there will be. 
uh, will play and I'm just gonna click off the key so at this point if I hit the number one watch it jump it jumps to this and it plays anything that's on this uh, this row right here if I hit the number two on my keyboard and number three so that's one way of automating clips to play uh, the loop in perpetuation here okay so the next thing we're gonna do is add some uh, special effects to our clips that are playing and the way you do that is we're gonna click back on the MIDI tab here where we have our viewer and what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our effects area here and we're just going to for fun uh, I'm gonna start with kaleidoscope which is the easiest one to see so there it is uh, and I'm gonna drag this in front of this viewer and let go and you'll notice that um, obviously it doesn't really matter the order it doesn't go from uh, left to right or right to left what happens is whatever the input of this is the, the audio or the video that's playing it will go directly to whatever you have selected so currently we have this being picking up clip player audio but if I scroll down to the bottom you can't see it but let me uh, let's see if I can zoom this in so you can see a little bit better so I click here you'll notice that there is now a new thing that I can pick which is the kaleidoscope so if I pick that kaleidoscope input you'll notice nothing changes here because kaleidoscope doesn't have anything but instead of the kaleidoscope having auto I am now going to pick up the clip player uh, 003 so the kaleidoscope has picked up the clip player so we're going from here to here to kaleidoscope and then the kaleidoscope is going from here to the viewer uh, and that's what we're seeing here and you can see just by playing with uh, things like the divisions uh, that you get instantly whatever is happening here is being fed to uh, this viewer window the number one and you'll notice that the video changes and that's because this media here is changing right uh, you'll see that the original media that we had before we put the divisions up I'm trying to get it to go down was this uh, waterfall thing uh, and now it's showing something like this and that's with our kaleidoscope so that's how the effects uh, pretty much work I'm gonna go ahead and select this effect uh, right click on it and just select delete and I'm gonna try another effect uh, one that just gives uh, things a little bit more uh, color or saturation does it some basic um, editing to the video it's called BR Cosa and I'm just put it in front and you'll see uh, I'll pick the input to be the clip player 3 and then for here I've got to pick the in point, input to be BR Cosa and now you can see that you can adjust some things like brightness contrast right and you can see you can even invert something by making the contrast negative by the way hit reset to reset everything to their original numbers um, and the nice part about these sliders is that you can easily map them to any type of MIDI input that you have on your uh, keyboard so if you do have a MIDI device you can you know you can just go to this little MIDI button click on the brightness area here and then move your controller knob or your slider and it will then be able you will then be able to use this slider in the future I do not have a MIDI device at this point so I have to do this manually lots of different effects for you to play with so give them a try uh, the next thing I want you to do uh, is go to the mix area so what we're going to do now is something where we're going to be mixing a few videos together right uh, and so what we're going to be using is the four channel mixer and the way I'm going to use this I'm going to put it right in front of the BR Cosa let go and you'll notice that this now has four channels of video that you can actually mix in as well as the mode of in which these things can get mixed uh, so there's a lot of different ways of doing it so let's review what we know so in order for us to use this I need to grab the video right here from the clip player now I can see the original video I need to feed this to the BR Cosa so that means I need to get 010 to be what is being fed here which is our mixer you see 010 now whatever is here is being fed here so if I turn this dial down you'll see it fades out and this fades in uh, and then this BR Cosa is being fed into our viewer so obviously we need another uh, bunch of video that's playing simultaneously so let's go ahead and use this second audio track and drag in three more media clips so I'm just gonna go online and select clips four through six 
and put them in here and I'm just gonna put them in and hit OK and now if I play this media clip uh, nothing will happen because this audio track does not have a clip player so we have to drag a clip player to this audio track and now we can see what is playing uh, here so we just hit the play button and you can see it's a different clip completely so let's go back to our MIDI track and we're going to select our input as um, let's see what is it called media 4 and it was one nice thing if you get really confused just select the actual clip player command R and then type in something like video 2 and this way we know exactly I'm just going to do the same thing here command R and video 1 so when I go back here to the MIDI area you can see it says video 1 here right and then here we should see video 2 and now if I drag video 2 up you'll notice uh, I'll make this a little bigger so you can see it. Um, you can notice how these clips are interacting. One clip and then the other clip. They're currently in the additive mode, but you can try subtractive mode. You can see how that works. right? These are different composite modes. Add modulus. And then finally, uh, screen, which makes everything brighter. And maximum, which I have no idea what it does, but it looks like it, it is a lot like screening. Uh, and then there's an over. Uh, which looks like it works a little bit like multiply, but looks pretty good. So you can do this up to four different tracks. And the nice thing is because we set this key strokes to be one to have both of these play. If I hit the number one, both of these videos will play at the same time. But if I hit the number two, it switches to the media two and media five. And you can kind of see how these two things interact. Okay, finally, we're going to finish off with something like automation. So what I'm going to try to do is automate some of these sliders uh, so that they automatically play uh, with the beats to the music. Those of you who know how to do MIDI automation or if envelope follow all know that, um, that you can automate almost everything happening here uh, using the beats and uh, any of the processing and notes that you have to automatically trigger things to happen. So. First thing I'm going to do is uh, right click here and insert an audio track because I need an actual track with music. Uh, I'm going to bring in a piece of music which I created using Suno and let go. And so I'm bringing that in. It's just a basic piece of music with some beats. So if I do that. Okay, we're going to stop that. All right, so you can kind of see it's got some heavy beats, uh, which is nice. Uh, what I'm going to do for this track is I am going to uh, go to Max for Live here and I'm going to use this envelope follower and I'm going to drag this down here um, and when I do that and I hit the uh, play button it's going to be loud again I'm going to turn this down but if I just play it you can kind of see the beats here and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mapping these we can map as many as one, two, three, four, five, six, like however many parameters we have here. We can map this to any of the sliders that we had. And you can see what we're seeing is this, the beat itself, um, but it's uh, just kind of going up and down based on the volume here. And it's very loud, so I'm going to just dial it down. And you'll notice that the volume does affect how this... Um, this follow envelope follower works. You can uh, increase the gain here for how sensitive it is. So if you want it to be a little lower here, it'll it'll still allow you to like make it as sensitive as possible because you want as much movement as possible. All right. So the way this works is you click on the map button once, and you can see it's flashing. It's a lot like the key button or the MIDI button. Then you go to a slider that you would like to change. And so in this case. Let's try changing uh, this video one slider. And so I click here and you'll notice right away um, that it's mixing the two videos. I'm going to move this to the middle here or move it to the bottom here. So it's mixing these two videos, video one and video two. Uh, I'm going to hit the number one again so that we have two things playing at the same time. And then I'm going to hit the play button here. So you can kind of see how with the beat and if I'll just turn the music on so you can hear it. Since my weapon, my magic machine, loops for the soul, keep it crispy and clean. Let's chop, let's slice, put the beat inside. 
Okay, so you get the idea. So what we're doing is we're using the envelope follower here, uh, and you can see it's it's mapped to the mix one uh, window, and under mix one, this is the mix one. Making this is like the center point of where things move, so you can kind of see you can get it to to modify based on the music uh, just by moving the slider down or up, and it'll make it more or less prevalent. So, and again, there's a ton of different um, effects available here uh, that you can uh, play with and each one of these uh, will have a slider that can be uh, used and you can use this um, envelope follower on multiple things so if you want to map, map the second mapping you just click on the second mapping here but this time maybe with the contrast okay now you can see that the contrast is going up and down and that means it's getting grayer inverting it and then getting brighter uh, depending on where I want it. So if you want it to be super weird, pull the contrast all the way down and it'll only move its way up towards the white or vice versa. If you want it to be something dark, uh, put the, pull the contrast up and it's only like moving up and down on this area. Hope you enjoyed this and uh, look forward to seeing what you guys produce for your projects.